Uh, good morning. Uh, morning this everyone. dialogue is all about consumption upgrade. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the upgrades that we've been through in China, we actually went through three waves already. Yep. The first one was in uh, mid-70s. The uh, consumption back then was all about bicycle, watches, and sewing machines. So those are called the old three pieces. Then in mid-80s, that was the second wave of upgrade. And then back then, it was uh, a TV, uh, a washing machine. Um, there's another one. Let me look at my notes. Uh, right, and fridge. All right, simple things. So these are called the new three pieces. Then in 1990s, that's the, three, the third wave. The third wave, the upgrade is huge. We're, we're buying telecommunication, which is mobile phone, property, and automobile. So China now is undergoing the fourth wave. And in my view, there is only one platform in China that's most authoritative to talk about this fourth wave of consumption upgrade. That's Red. And Miranda here is the co-founder of Red. Miranda, I want to introduce uh, what Red is about, and also, you know, why do you think the consumption, the fourth wave, is happening now? Well, thank you, Betty. Okay, let me first uh, briefly intro uh, introduce our app, which is called Red. In Chinese, we say Xiao Hong Shu. Um, we're a social community uh, with people sharing about their shopping and their lifestyle, mm. and also. At the same time, we ran a cross-border e-commerce B2C platform. Mm. So um, talking about this consumption upgrade, why it is happening, mm -hmm. I think because now the mainstream shoppers in China are changing. Right. You know, um, five to 10 years ago, it was people like me, people born around the 1980s who are the mainstream shoppers. And now they're different. We say the, the new age has come. And if you are thinking, um, if someone was born in 1991, then the whoops, now he or she is 25, and that's where he or she forms his or her own lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So these are all the post-90s, in a way. Um, right. I think, yeah, uh, or people with the attitudes of post-90s, yes. Right. So what have you observed on your platform? Because I know you capture a lot of user behavior data, and you know what they're most interested in buying. Uh, so what have you observed that these, these post-90s, whether biologically or you mm -hmm. know, psychological, mm -hmm. mentally, what, what triggered this, the, 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 this new wave of consumption? And what's the drive behind it? Okay, um, thank you. I think I'll first talk about the, um, the consumption behavior as a witness. You know, um, I think in one sentence, mm. Chinese people are now shopping globally. I believe every one of you here has ran into Chinese shoppers all around the world. You know, they started their trip with two empty cases and come back with two full ones. Probably you know? four. <laughs> yeah, all four. And you know, Japan has issued a report for last year. Chinese tourists have spent 80 billion, you know, 80 billion RMB in Japan last year alone. That contributes to 40% of the total sales from t foreign tourists in Japan last year. 80 billion will be about 12 billion US? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, only for last year alone. And I, I also would like to share one of my personal experience. Two and a half years ago, when we first started Brad, I was here in Hong Kong. You know, I still remember that winter exactly before the Christmas sale. I had to wait for three hours in Sogo in order to pay for one item. It was at that time I finally see the new age has come. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between this wave and the three other waves that I talked about previously? Um, I think that comes back to the question that who is just what is changing. It's because of the mainstream shoppers. Mm -hmm. And let's take a deeper look at um, how they grow up, you know. Um, people born after the 90s, they grow up with internet rather than TV. They have, um, they, they have much more international exposure, mm -hmm. which makes them have a higher expectation of their lifestyles. And they want more information. They want um, everything to be known before they make any purchase decision. Mm -hmm. So I think they want to 
uh, make sure they get the best experience. And I know that they go after quality now, yes. because I think there is a perception about Chinese consumers are very cost conscious, and mm -hmm. they always uh, you know, go for cheaper stuff, um, you know, whether it's online or offline store. But I know that on your platform, it's a completely different story. They're going for the quality. Do you want to explore that a little bit? Um, yes, um, I think there's a lot, always a lot of misconception about the Chinese consumers all the way. But uh, to find out what their real interest is, you have to see what they're buying, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when you open a red, you can see a lot of Chinese new generation are buying cosmetics from Japan, they buy health supplements from New Zealand and Australia, they buy fashion bags from Italy. They just embracing the world. Mm -hmm. It's not like five or ten years ago. They just buy what's kind of like cheap. So I think by answering this question, I would suggest everyone of you here to open the bread and see what they're sharing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that when it comes to maybe social or e-commerce, there are other like you know bigger platforms in China, sure. and you probably found those platforms uh, representatives speaking at a lot of conferences. Red is very different. Red is unique, right? You're a combination of social and commerce. Yes. But you're very different from all those big platforms that probably a lot of you are familiar with. Do you want to explain to our audience what's the difference between Red and all the other uh, you know, better known platforms in China? Yes. Um, then that will come to what data we have, right? Um, just there are a lot of social platforms where you share your pictures and videos about your lifestyle, about work, about hobbies, where they have the data of who you are. Mm -hmm. And you go to social on um, you you go to e-commerce platform where they have the data of where your money go, right? Mm -hmm. But it's very you know, we're very lucky we have both. Uh, just let me first take you offline to further explain this. Imagine a woman let's say Miranda um, is seeing a shopping mall. And I don't know what to buy. You know, that often happens. So what do I do? I will talk to my female friends, find out what they have, what they have bought recently, and I'll, go some, I'll do some uh, window shopping. And that's exactly what our users do on Red. People opening the, the Red app and browsing all the, the sharings, and when they get the inspiration, they want to ensure the best experience. So they just turn to the next page, go and get it. Mm -hmm. just, just so you know how Red operates, is uh, they started off as a social network. Yes, exactly. And these are generating sharing, uh, you know, buying or purchase sharing yes. by, by the, the, the users. And yes. none of these users are sellers in a way, so they're not merchants and they're not allowed to sell actually. And I know that Red, you will monitor on the background. If anyone tried to put in any you know, you know, e-commerce link and all that, you'll actually read no it. No ads. Exactly. So if they started off as a, as a social uh, platform. And because it's genuine and there's no hidden agenda by these people who share what they're buying, um, it, it actually becomes a phenomenon quite, quite quickly, especially among young generation. And then, um, could, because they, you guys have captured all the data, sharing data, so I think very interestingly, you would know in the background, what are the products that are in high demand? Because you, you track the interactions, right? Between yes, exactly. users and people who post it. And then I understand that Red worked directly with brands, yes. with those brands. And that's why the cross-border uh, came into play. So I think that's a very, uh, it, the way that you operate is very different from all the other uh, e-commerce platform, if, if I may, in China. Um, like Miranda said, when, sh when shoppers go to e-commerce platform, they already have in mind what I'm going to buy. So a platform wouldn't know that whole journey, yes. but you would. Um, so I know that you have 17 million users yeah, already. Yeah, the end of last year, yeah. Right. Do you, can you share with our audience what are some of the most um, sold after or most uh, you know, talked about and most in, you know, interactive sort of categories of products that your users are, are you know, having a lot of discussions online? Yeah, well, um, I, I think it's really everything about the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's not only bags. It's also cosmetics. It's also uh, everything about house supplies, 
it's um, health supplements, which becomes the bigger category, mm -hmm. and it's also restaurants and hotels. Mm -hmm. So this new consumption upgrade is everywhere. It's right. seeing everybody's life. Mm -hmm. And also red is very key on user experience. Yes. And that user experience is more than or beyond just how the app is operating, how everything flows, right? Yes. But also on the logistics. So do you want to tell all the audience how you operate that logistics in the background? You don't outsource it. You actually manage it yourself. Yes. yes. Um, I think that goes back to the question that why we do not, why we didn't choose the ad model and operate the e-commerce ourselves? Actually, it, it is a very hard decision. You know, for the first one and a half year, we are only in community, which means you can see a lot of things here, but you can't buy any. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like the end, uh, at the end of uh, or at the beginning of last year, we started to just really do some deep dive into it. Mm -hmm. You know, people are complaining about that on App Store that I see a lot of things, but I can't buy any. Mm -hmm. And when we go into this market and we see those products they share on Red are not available, are either not available in China or they're too expensive. Mm -hmm. That's why we're thinking that, wow, we should do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And to ensure the best experience. That's why we are handling the logistics. I think many of you here have been very familiar with our red boxes, yeah. which is people saying it's a marketing tool, but actually not. It's just a box that contains what you have bought. We do everything, try to make people happy, because we, we think that now the new generation do not only want the function of the products, but they also want to get satisfaction out of this shopping experience. Mm -hmm. So every detail we put in the whole journey is about make them happy. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't experienced the logistics nightmare experience in China, <laughs> you would know that whatever you do before you receive the package was fine. But the minute that the package arrived at your home, it's either dented or broken or very dirty. But the way that Red did was you, like you said, you actually own and, mo um, and manage your own warehouse, your own logistics. And that box, I tried many times. <laughs> I bought many things on, on Red. The Red box, I was never dented when I received them. It's, it, you know, and then the way they pack the stuff in the boxes was just, you know that there's a lot of fog going into it. So I think that whole experience, you started by genuine sharing. So that consumer know that that sharing has no agenda. And then they actually can buy the product they like on your platform. And that experience was, was fantastic as well. Now, if you are brands or brand owners in the audience, you probably think this is a great platform for wow. advertising and marketing, right? I'm very sorry to tell you that Red <laughs> actually, um, their main, let me just put it this way, your main revenue stream is not marketing dollars. They do not take advertising. Yeah, we do not take any marketing dollars. Right, so, so get, that, get that clear and straight. They do not do advertising. So there's no point for you going after Miranda and say, can I add play, uh, you know, uh, uh, advertising money. But you do work with brands. How, how, do you, how do you work with brands? Do you want to explain to our, our mm. audience? Well, um, now the, the, kind of, um, the main model is that they, ha they, they can do business through our channel. We purchase directly from kind of a brands uh, internationally, and we transfer everything to our warehouse and we sell them. And just to um, just correct the one thing that we operate our own cross-border warehouse. We have kind of like um, just two cross-border warehouse and the one warehouse in Hong Kong, but we do not own logistics. I think the logistics in China is good enough that we do not have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But we just want to ensure the best experience, so that's why we're cooperating with a lot of brands. Mm -hmm. I do think a lot of brands are now realizing that they need a lot of new platforms to get to know their users and to sell to them. Mm -hmm. um, the e-commerce, one of the most uh, talked about uh, bad experience for shoppers, in, online shoppers for, in China, is fake goods, right? You, you will actually buy fake goods that you didn't know on a lot of big platforms. That, I think that's why you work with Brand Direct. You wanted to give your user that, 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 I guess, reassurance. So is it true that the users on your platform, even though they can find cheaper products elsewhere, they, they still choose to buy on, on your platform? Is that, 
Is that true? Um, exactly. Um, I think uh, talking about the price, we're not the cheapest regarding of the one item. But what we are trying to do is ensure the best experience, as I've mentioned a number of times today, the best experience. You know, um, I think price is one concern this day still, but people are so much willing to pay for one or, or even five or 10 RMB more in order to get the real products mm. and to receive a good package. Mm -hmm. so, um, they, they, so you have a different ways of working with brands. Instead of just pushing hardcore advertising uh, to your users, you actually uh, prefer to work with brands to make brands' products available because yes. of those data. So is it, um, is it right to say that actually brands can work with you on your data? Because you capture so much user data, right? Um, so far, we, we, we haven't been used any of the data already mm. um, because I think it, first it's very private data, and the second is that um, we, we will do some experiment in the future mm -hmm. that to do more personalization. That's why, uh, regarding about technique, uh, we're very heavy on machine learning right now mm -hmm. just to find out more about who you are and what's your real interest. Mm -hmm. But um, right now, that why brand wants to work, us, uh, work with us? You know, um, one day I was um, with one of the kind of a GM from a Korean cosmetic brand. Mm -hmm. you know, he he didn't speak any Chinese, and he just types the English name on red and do search. Mm -hmm. And you know what comes out is kind of like hundreds, thousands of the posts of their product, and they, and it's his first time to know red. Mm -hmm. And why so? Why wouldn't she mm -hmm. or he work with red? So mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of brands come to work with us and to sell through our channel. Even it's our, it, it might be their first e-channel. Mm -hmm. It's because we have the users mm -hmm. and we have the new generation they want. Right. So so that's a that's a new uh, China entry opportunities for brands who haven't entered China. So if your brands haven't entered China, don't panic. <laughs> uh, it's it's not too late, but you actually come in the right time because you probably don't have to go through the traditional approach where you have to spend a lot of money setting up, you know, physical store. Yes. But you have your e-platform <laughs> that can reach out to many consumer, potential consumers for you. And they can actually tell you how your, how your users or consumers are, are assessing your product. So those are really real, real data. Exactly, yeah. Um, why we call ourselves kind of the user generating content because everyone that uh, users sharing in our community, their users, they're not allowed to sell anything, they're not allowed to on ads, you know, it's very strict. And but you do see the consumption upgrade and we think the next China opportunity is definitely the new consumption upgrade. And it's our chance. It's uh, Red's chance and it's, and it's also everyone of you here. So great news, uh, even if you're expensive brands or you're, you come through an e-channel, uh, you may slightly be you know, diff more expensive than your uh, competitor who's been there. But the advantage that you have is you have no legacy. <laughs> you actually can start from, you know, from scratch and then work with great platform where have genuine, uh, genuine data like yours. Do you have any advice to our audience if they are brand owners or marketing uh, uh, you know, professionals? Um, I think marketing or, or you know <laughs> e-commerce in China. <laughs> I think Bessie has more experience than me in that. But um, talking about my past experience of two or three years, I would say really get to know them, to get to know what apps, apps on their phone, what games they're playing, what music they're listening to. It all shows who they are. Mm -hmm. And you know, I always have a favorite saying that. Uh, we're doing nothing wrong, we're just getting old. <laughs> so you have to get to know the new generation. They will be the mainstream shoppers in the very mm -hmm. short time. And mobile is important. And Red sure. actually started mobile first. Yes, Isn't and we're a mobile only platform. Excellent. OK, so that wraps up the, our dialogue today. Thank if you, you have Betty. any more questions, you're welcome to take it offline and talk to Miranda during the conference. Thank you very much, Miranda. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.